You've probably heard of Portainer. That's the decade-old Swiss Army knife for managing container runtimes and orchestrators such as Docker, Swarm, Kubernetes, Podman. Well, Portainer recently added the ability to manage Kubernetes on Talos Linux. Have you heard of Talos Linux? So Talos Linux is, how do I think of it? It's a Linux distribution, but it is only for Kubernetes. And it's not for running in containers. It is the OS that you would put in your virtual machines or on your bare metal or run in a cloud VM. And Talos Linux is not new. It's been around since I think 2018 or so, but I haven't had a chance to use it. Well, that changed at KubeCon in London this month where Portainer invited me to their workshop on their new Kubernetes cluster management integration with Talos Linux with Portainer, who's having a workshop on this ship behind me. And yep, the workshop was on an actual ship next to the conference center. So I took my Docker captain hat with me, which I've only ever kept in my office wall. And I hopped on board the ship named the Sunborn and joined a bunch of engineers all packed in a room, wanting to learn a little about Telus Linux and how Portainer is able to manage it. And I've been hearing about Telus Linux for a few years from people that are dealing with their own data centers or bare metal, maybe some Raspberry Pis they have laying around, or just wanting a cross cloud or hybrid cloud OS that's just for Kubernetes. We've had container native Linux operating systems for a decade now, but Talos is, I think, different from all of those. In fact, it's kind of radical at the way it approaches remote management. And that means there's no SSH at all. The way you manage this OS that's only for running Kubernetes is that one, it comes with Kubernetes. It, it is built in there to install and manage the Kubernetes for you. And two, the OS is managed through a remote custom API that is actually pretty cool. It's a full featured CLI that even has shell dashboards for looking at hardware stats or seeing logs coming through. So it kind of feels purpose-built, and I love that. I love the opinionated approach. And honestly, it seems like the internet loves it too. On Hacker News, I had a hard time finding anyone talking negatively about it. People loved Talos if they had used it and were using it for years. So Portainer and Sidero invited people out to learn how to build out a Talos Linux cluster specifically to run Kubernetes, because that's, again, what Talos is made for. So let's get into how this all works. The real point of this workshop was to show off Portainer Business Edition, that's the paid version of Portainer, a new feature that Portainer released that allows you to work through the Omni portal, don't worry, this will all make sense in a minute, to manage many different Kubernetes clusters and to even set them up and control the version of the operating system in Talos Linux and the version of Kubernetes running so I drew this out to try to make sense of how this is working. Now, if you were to go download the Talos Linux ISO or cloud image and upload it anywhere you want, because it's basically got versions of it for every cloud and every possible scenario that I could think of running Linux on, then the Talos OS itself, because it's so Kubernetes centric, it actually manages its own OS cluster the same way that Kubernetes runs the Kubernetes cluster. So when you bring these VMs together, it has the concept of entry points into the cluster for OS management, and then nodes in the rest of the cluster that are essentially the workers. And then it layers Kubernetes on top of it, and you tell the OS what Kubernetes version you want installed, and then various changes you want to happen through Talos extensions, and it will wire all this up for you with a vanilla distribution of Kubernetes. Essentially, it's the Talos Linux distribution only running in Talos. And if you were to do this without any of the paid tools or GUIs, you sitting at your computer would use the Talos CTL command to manage the OS and to get Kubernetes up and running. And then you would use your standard kube control CLI to manage the rest of your workload. Now, if you wanted to do what this workshop did and you want to add on all these easier administrative tools on top of it, I've created a different diagram that's a little busy, but this made sense to me on how these parts work together. Because when you're going through a fast-paced two-hour workshop 
and you're learning all these different things all at once, it can be a little bit hard to handle. So we have the same cluster. This is really just one Kubernetes cluster down here. And you first need to get those VMs connected to Omni. And Omni is Sidero's web management or OS management tool that you can either run in their SaaS or on-prem. But as far as I know, this is a paid for production tool that doesn't just automate you downloading and bundling all the drivers and things you need into a custom VM to run your Talos, but it also provides an OS management layer on top of that that lets you see basic hardware stats, allow you to upgrade clusters or look at hardware utilization. And so the green parts on this map are the management layers that we're adding on top. So you can see down here at the bottom, we have the Portainer Edge Agent, which that comes in later. So we can see that the first thing we're going to do here is add Omni to our management environment. And when we do that, we're using the Omni portal that you can go get at Sidero's website. It's going to provide a more custom VM installation option, whether you're downloading that for local ISO use or bare metal, or a cloud image like an AMI, however you wanna get that OS image of Talos, it's going to add in what it needs for these machines to automatically connect back to Omni. So step one, as soon as they boot, they have no instructions, whether you're doing it on DigitalOcean or your local machine or some other cloud or bare metal, these things don't have anything installed when they start. So they're coming back to Omni for instructions. And then Omni allows us to create our Kubernetes clusters and it will also manage the Telus Linux. For this workshop, we added on top of that, the Portainer option. So Portainer being more of a workload management, although it does have some of the OS management features inside it, it's really focused on the container management layer. And Omni feels more like it's a little lower level. So we need to make a connection between Omni and Portainer. And we did that in the workshop where we essentially created API keys for Portainer to log into Omni and control it remotely. And then once we did that, which is, that's the paid feature, the business edition paid feature of Portainer. Once we did that, then Portainer could deploy the cluster of OSs, and then I could pick the version of that OS as well as the Kubernetes version on top of it. And it tells Omni to set all that up for me. And of course, because it's Portainer, Portainer has the ability for me to do third-party auth and give controls to individual users that I either create inside Portainer itself or I use an external auth. It does all that management through each VM using the Portainer Edge agent, which is not new in and of itself. That's been around for a while, but Portainer will ask the Omni and Talos system to install these Portainer Edge agents outside of Kubernetes on each OS to manage them remotely. And then those agents connect back over a TLS tunnel to Portainer. So that's why we've got all these different management connections. At the end of the day, you, the administrator, are sitting at your computer, mostly probably using the browser and Portainer and Omni to do some of your management. Both of these things can be set up in a declarative style using YAML. You also have the kube control to manage Kubernetes as usual, but the key here is that I can go through a Portainer and Portainer acts as a API proxy and it also provides the RBAC to that proxy. So that way, none of my admins need direct access to the cluster. They just need to be able to access Portainer. And the same is true of the Omni control for managing the lower level OS settings, adding any additional extensions or packages at the OS layer. We would use the Omni control or just the Omni GUI to do that. And if we wanted to get a little more detailed into how the OS of Talos separates out the different parts between Talos and Kubernetes, you can see here that the administrators on the left side, on the right side is the worker nodes, and in the middle we have a box for the Kubernetes control plane. But again, with Talos, it has its own control plane for the OS that mirrors Kubernetes. So the orange bits are the Sidero and Talos side of things where you're using Talos control. If you weren't using Omni, which is the paid product, these are all of the free bits here. Talos control, talks to the OS through the API daemon, and that manages the OS much like you would with SSH if you were in a traditional Linux distribution. And that has a few parts. In fact, the Talos team brags that there's only 12 executable binaries, 
on these OSs versus virtually every other Linux OS out there that has 2300 or more binaries on the host. And so that's how minimal Telos is. It's less than 100 meg and only 12 binaries for the full OS. Now that OS by default doesn't come with Kubernetes bundled inside the image. It will download those vanilla upstream Kubernetes components when you tell it what version of Kubernetes to install. I can do that with Talos Control or through Omni and Portainer. And all the blue parts are the very typical Kubernetes management parts that you would see in any Kubernetes course or lesson where we have the basics of the control plane the kubelet and the proxy stuff that goes on each node, as well as the container runtime. And you can see that there's not much of a management layer on top of it. Well, this particular part is the internals of how you manage the OS and Kubernetes. But if you see, if we go back to the bigger picture, we can see how just that being what's in those orange boxes and how we're using all the different pieces of this puzzle to manage it. Now, if you were gonna do this with just the pure open source bits, you would start with the Talos Linux image that you need to download for your specific scenario at factory.talos.dev. You would get a choice between little computers like a Raspberry Pi or bare metal, and then a cloud server like an AMI or something custom for individual clouds. You can see that once you've chosen the version that to install, you get quite a few options. There's dozens of clouds here. And then if I choose bare metal, which is the one I used for part of this demo, I just downloaded an image for my local VM provider and installed it the sort of traditional ISO way. And when you do that, it boots from the image without installing anything on the OS. And then you can configure this remotely through the API using the Talos CTL command. And this video isn't gonna go through all the different stuff that you do with the Talos CTL, but Suffice to say, it ends up with you having two or three YAML files that configure the OS, tell it what things to install, tell it which version of Kubernetes to install, sets up all the certificates for mutual authentication, locks everything down, and at the end, just provides you with a ready-to-go Linux OS with a Kubernetes cluster set up the way you want it. And then you start adding nodes through that same command line. Now, once the nodes are all set, you can just use your standard Kubernetes CLIs or GUI tools to manage all of that. And you would come back to the Talos control tool anytime you wanted to manage the OS itself. And quite honestly, I don't have a lot of experience with this stuff, but I'm totally into it. Like I can see how managing an OS the same way I manage my containers and my orchestration and all my other declarative infrastructure, that feels appealing to me. I have generally been using Ansible for over a decade to manage Linux that I had to manage myself. And the idea that we have something that's not shoehorned on top of that same SSH and providing apt commands on my behalf and changing and editing files and text on my behalf, and that I have something that's way more declarative and native feels right. Like that feels like the right way for us to take a true Kubernetes Linux. So what would I like to see with this setup since I enjoyed the workshop and ran through it multiple times to try to make sure I understood all the pieces to this puzzle? It does feel like a lot when you're first getting started to learn the Talos OS and the way of doing things like you've never done before on an OS, and then to figure out how you want Kubernetes to run on top of that. And then you need to learn the Omni tool and then Portainer on top of it. That all feels like a lot of new. So this setup is really optimized for someone who specifically wants to use Portainer or likes the idea of Portainer as an all-in-one web UI for managing all their different Kubernetes clusters and even dedicated Docker nodes, as well as Swarm and Podman. I mean, you can do all of that in one centralized Portainer. And then for any machines that you need to run your own OS on, or you need to pick the Linux OS to run, then you maybe just use Talos Linux everywhere, whether that's in the data center or in clouds where you have to manage the actual OS updates. And now you've got a consistent OS layer, regardless of where you're running it. And you can patch and update those all within the same tooling. And it feels cleaner. I'm definitely going to have a lot less, if any, Ansible to do any of this. In fact, if I was to imagine running all this in the cloud today, I would probably just have Terraform 
to manage creating the cloud instances, I would tell Terraform to use my Talos Linux AMI or boot image with the configuration to lock it all down and make it the way I'd like it. And then I need to just decide on how I'm going to manage Kubernetes on top of that. And so let me know in the comments if you want to see more about any one of these tools, if you want me to dive more into the Kubernetes management aspects of Portainer, or if you're more interested in Talos Linux deployments, maybe using pure open source tools, or if you want me to explain a little bit more of how Omni's working, I might be able to get some other people to come in and help me understand a lot of those details from the Sidero or Portainer side. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.